strikes to Russian military airfield in Crimea caused serious problems in supply of Russians. On the night of the 17th of April, explosions occurred in the town of Zankoy near the military airfield. According to local residents, the explosions occurred before the air raid alert was announced. Footage widely circulated on social media by Russian and Ukrainian sources show bright flashes of light and explosions with sirens wailing in the background. A local telegram channel reported several loud explosions before a fire broke out. Roads around the airbase are blocked, the channel later reported. Zankoy is a major military hub, home to one of Russia's largest airfields in Crimea. It is a key location for supplying Russian troops up through Moscow-controlled southern Ukraine and the front lines of fighting on the mainland. Russia annexed Crimea back in 2014. Open source intelligence accounts said that Russian forces used the airfield as a base for attack helicopters and anti-aircraft missile systems. Several reports suggest Ukrainian forces may have struck the facility, but Kyiv has not commented. Russian airbases in Crimea have been targeted by Kyiv in the more than two years of all-out war. Earlier this year, Ukraine's Air Force said it had launched missile strikes on the Belbek airfield close to the port city of Sevastopol on Crimea's western edge. Ukrainian military analyst Sergei Grabsky analyzed what the occupiers could have lost in Zankoy military airfield. Mainly helicopters are based at the airfield, but it is worth understanding that the airfield is not only a parking lot for aircraft. It is also a warehouse with supplies. Therefore, a series of explosions that began there even before the announcement of the air raid warning may mean that this strike was applied very accurately, the expert commented. He also noted that any attacks on Russian aviation pose a serious threat to the Russian Federation. If the Russian Federation is doing well with the land component at the moment, then restoring the Air Force component is something they have problems with. It is much more difficult to restore aviation equipment. Therefore, the destruction of any element of this type of weapon means large losses for the enemy, Grabsky explained. In addition, the expert confirmed the recent words of Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky that now the ratio of Ukrainian to Russian aviation can be considered as 1 to 30. The Russians have concentrated 300 planes and 290 helicopters on all fronts of this war. But the Russian Federation cannot increase its air component. And, relying on the help of Western allies, we can achieve parity, the expert noted. Saudi Arabia took part in downing Iranian drones during strike on Israel. Saudi Arabia took part in downing some Iranian UAVs during Saturday's strike on Israel, a source in the royal family has admitted in response to a report by the Israeli public broadcaster Khan. According to the Israel Defense Forces, Tehran's attack involved 170 drones, more than 30 cruise missiles, and more than 120 ballistic missiles. The strikes came in retaliation for the bombing of the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria, that left several senior Iranian military officers dead earlier this month. The US, UK and Jordan helped the Israel Defense Forces intercept almost all of the incoming projectiles during last Saturday's attack. According to Khan, Saudi Arabia joined in the effort as well. A source from the Saudi royal family who prefers anonymity has spoken with Khan and subtly acknowledged the kingdom's role, stating that Riyadh's air defenses automatically intercept any suspicious entity, according to the official website of the Al Saud dynasty. The same source accused Iran of instigating the conflict in Gaza between Israel and Hamas, accusing Tehran of attempting to unravel the progress in normalizing relations between Riyadh and West Jerusalem. Iran is a nation that endorses terrorism and the world should have curtailed it much earlier. The unnamed official told Khan. The anonymous royal's statements would represent a shift from recent Saudi rhetoric, which has condemned Israel's onslaught against the Palestinians in Gaza, while working to end decades-long enmity with Iran. The Sunni Muslim Kingdom has long been allied with the US and has aided crackdowns on Shia Muslims in places like Bahrain and Yemen, believing them to be proxies of the Islamic Republic. Riyadh and Tehran agreed to restore diplomatic relations in March 2023 in a deal brokered by China. CIA Director William Burns admitted at the time that the US had been blindsided by the talks.